Today we are talking about the DJI Digital FPV system and specifically the FCC hack that allows up to 8 channels and 700 milliwatts as well as the 1200 milliwatt hack for maximum output. Now in this video we're going to cover how to do this on the DJI FPV goggles version 1 and version 2 as well as the standard ear unit from DJI and the Cadix Vista. Now just to be clear I've already made a video on how to do these quite some time ago when these first got known. However a lot has changed since then and we have the the new version 2 goggles as well. So what I thought I would do is create a new video showing the whole process for the ear units as well as the goggles in one and discuss the situation with the FPV goggles version 2 as well. Now currently these hacks work on all the current known firmware. That is for the version 1 goggles 1.00.0600 which is the current latest and for the version 2 1.00.06.04. At this point it works on that firmware. However, do be aware that there is no guarantee DJI won't change this in the future. And if these hacks are important to you, please be aware before updating to any new firmware that does get released. It's unlikely we'll see many changes on the version 1 goggles now. However, the version 2s are likely to see quite a few firmware updates over the next couple of months as we see compatibility come for the new DJI FPV drone. I would strongly suggest holding back on updating your goggles if you're using them with the ear units just to make sure that nothing has changed if these hacks are important to you. But at the point of making this video, which is around the 20th of February 2021, and those firmware versions, all of these hacks work exactly the same as they always have. Now, what we're going to do first of all is do the FCC hack because you do need to have that in place before doing the 1200 milliwatt. That is for those who are not in an FCC area. If you are in an FCC area though, you can jump straight to the 1200 milliwatt section. Now, I will put chapter marks in this video so you can skip through as well, showing us how to do the FCC on the standard ear unit, the Cadex Vista, and then the 1200 milliwatt hack on the goggles too. Now, just before we jump into it, I just want to say finally, if you'd like to support the channel, there are links to the DJI FPV system in the description of this video. There's links to the goggles as well as the ear units as well. They are affiliate links, but it is only by you guys using them am I able to keep making videos like this. Finally, if you find the video useful, please do consider hitting in the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell as well that way you'll get updates on any videos I release in the future. Anyway let's get on with this. Now the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the FCC hack for the DJI FPV E unit on the standard one then we'll do the Cadex Vista and then we'll hop over to the goggles. So to talk about the FCC hack, first of all, this allows you to force your ear unit to go into the FCC mode. Now, it actually is a hack that allows you to change what mode the ear unit is in, and you can choose to put it in FCC. In this video, I'm going to specifically talk about putting it in FCC, but you can put it in the other modes, and I'll show you them on the screen. But for most people, FCC is the one they're going to be looking for. Now what FCC does is allow you to get up to the maximum of seven channels plus one public which gives you the eight and then get up to the 700 milliwatt output as standard. Now if you're in the USA you have this already you don't need to worry about it. It is only other regions in such as the UK or Europe that would need to do this to be able to get the extra channels and the output from the system. Now the way we do this is by putting a file on the SD card for the standard ear unit or on the Vista itself on that one. Now you need a micro SD card for using on the DJI FPV unit and we simply need to create a file called NACO and place that on the card put that in the ear unit and that will then tell it what to do. Now I'm going to walk you through how to set that file up in the next section of this video. However, if you didn't want to do that, I'll also put a link to directly download that file in the description of this video as well. So rather than create it like I'm going to show you here, you can simply download it place the text file on the card and put it in your unit ready to go. So if you're going to do that, you can actually jump to the next section. But first of all, I'm going to show you how to create the file itself. OK, so to make the file, we simply need to place the SD card in our computer and create a text file called NACO, which contains a number that represents the mode we want it to go into. Now, for FCC mode, it is number one, but you can set it to other modes depending on what you want to do. And I will put a little image on the screen showing the other modes that are available and you would simply change the number depending on which one you want. However, for the purposes of this, we're simply going to choose FCC, which is number one. Now, I am doing this on Windows, so we're simply going to create a text 
text document in Notepad. However, if you are using Mac, you will need to get a proper rich text editor. In my opinion, if you're using a Mac, it's probably quicker to download the file that I've already created for you. Otherwise, go online and find one of the many free editors. Anyway, on Windows, we're in the SD card. We're simply going to right click, click new and click text document and it will then create a document for us. We're going to name this document NACO and click enter and that is the file been created. Now at this point there's nothing in it so we do need to open it up and put the number that we want for the mode that we're going to choose. So once we've created it we're simply going to double click it and you can see it opens and we're going to simply write number one, click file and save click close and that is it. That then will tell the system to actually force it into FCC mode. So what we need to do now is take the SD card out of the computer, place it in the ear unit and allow it to unlock the FCC mode. Okay, so I've got the SD card in the ear unit and we're now simply going to power it up and I'll show you what happens on the goggles. So we're going to power the ear unit up and wait then for the FPV system to connect. Now what should happen at this point is you will see it jump from the four available channels Give it a second, it will then lose the image transmission settings, then it will reboot and then come up with the option of eight channels showing us that we are in FCC mode. Now, as you can see on the screen, it's now showing that the eight channels are available, which means we're in FCC. And if we were in a CE area, we can go down to settings, go down to the options, and you can then see that we've got all of the power outputs available up to 700 milliwatts as well. Next, we're going to take a look at doing the same hack on the Cadex Vista. Now, the process on this is a little bit different because there is no SD card on this. So instead, what we actually have to do is transfer the file to the internal storage on the Cadex Vista via USB-C. So rather than create the file and put it on an SD card, you simply create the file on the Cadex Vista directly by plugging it into your computer. So the first thing we're going to do is plug the the USB-C into the Cadex Vista and into my PC and then take a look at the drive that shows up. So I've got the Cadex Vista connected to my USB on my computer and the ear unit is powered up as well. It is important that when you're doing this on the Vista it does have to have power otherwise the computer won't be able to detect it. Now as you can see in my computer we have a USB drive has appeared which is USB drive I on my computer and this is the drive for the Cadex Vista. So the process is exactly the same on this as the standard ear unit. What I'm going to do is create create a new file which is called NACO, then go inside to the file, put in number one, click file and save, close that and that is it on this one. There's no transfer of the file needed because we are making it directly on the ear unit itself. If you downloaded the file from the link in the description of this video, simply copy it and drag it onto the ear unit drive and it should appear as a USB drive in your computer. If you're finding it doesn't appear as a USB, simply unplug it and plug it back in a couple of times and then it should appear correctly in computer. So the file is on the SD card on the Vista and we're now ready to power it up. Now the same thing will happen on this as it did on the standard ear unit. It'll power up to the four channels first of all. It'll then have a think about things and then it'll kick into the eight channels which shows you're in FCC mode. If it remains in four channels, it hasn't worked and for some reason your file hasn't been accepted and I would suggest going back and starting again. So what we're gonna do is power up the ear unit wait for it to connect to the goggles and i'm just recording this on here just to be able to show you guys as well give it a second to actually kick in we'll then come back up to the menu at the top and have a look at the player you can see that it is currently showing four and then it jumped to eight available channels which means that the fcc hack has now took and it's basically ready to go and that is how you do the FCC hack on the ear units. Now, just to answer a couple of questions, you will need to do this hack on each individual ear unit you have. It doesn't spread automatically, so you will need to do it on each one. So if you've got four standard ear units, you'll need to swap that SD card between each four. If you've got multiple vistas, you'll need to connect it up to your computer multiple times and put the file on board the internal storage. Another question often asked is, how long will the hack last? Well, it will remain until you do something like update the 
firmware. The second you connect your ear unit to the assistant for DJI FPV, it will reset the hack and you will have to perform it again. Don't worry, it doesn't lock you out, but you will need to do the hack again. Um, another question often asked is, can I leave the hack on the SD card? And the question for that is yes, you can leave the text file on there, no problem at all. On the Vista, you can leave it on the internal storage. On the DJI FPV ear unit, you can leave it on the card, but just remember it will get deleted if you format the card and you might have to do the hack again if you were to connect it to the assistant for FPV. Now, next, we're going to move over to doing the 1200 milliwatt hack, and that is done on the goggles, not the ear units. Now, as I said earlier that the hack for FCC has to be done on each individual ear unit, the 1200 milliwatt hack does not. The 1200 milliwatt hack is for the goggles, and it works on both the version ones and version twos, but you only need to do it once. But again, the same thing applies. If you were to connect it to assistant for FPV, from DJI, it will reset and you would need to do the hack again. Now, the process for the 1200 milliwatt hack is very similar to the FCC on the ear unit. We need to create a text file called NACO underscore PWR, standing for power, place it on the SD card and put it in the goggles and I'll walk you through doing that now. However, again, if you didn't want to do that, there is a link to the file in the description of this video that you can simply download, place on the SD card, put in your goggles and it'll be ready to go. So what we need to do is create a file on the SD card called NACO underscore PWR. Now, if you saw the section where we did the E unit, it is very similar, but it's just the labels and what we're going to put in the file is a little bit different as well. Just like we did before, we're going to use this on Windows and we're going to use Notepad. However, if you are a Mac user, do be aware that the inbuilt text editor doesn't work and you would need to download one of the third party text editors to do it. To be honest, if you're a Mac user, I would simply download the file that I've put in the description because it'll make your life easier. Anyway, I've got the SD card in my computer and what we're going to do is right click on that and simply create new text document. Now, the file for the goggles 1200 milliwatt needs to be called NACO underscore PWR. So it's NACO underscore power and that is the file that we need to create. Once we've done that, we need to open the file up and in this we need to place some specific text. Now it is a little bit different to the ear unit. In the ear unit we simply put a number. However, this time we need to put in some text with it as well. Now there are two options available for this. There is PWR underscore one and PWR underscore two. PWR underscore one will tell the goggles to allow you to see the 1000 milliwatt mode only and PWR underscore two gives you the option of 1000 milliwatts or 1200 milliwatts. So I would suggest that you always do the PWR underscore two. Once you've done that, you simply click file, save, and then take the SD card out of our computer, place it into the goggles, give it a couple of seconds, and then it will make the 1200 milliwatt modes available to you as long as you've got the FCC mode already done on the ear unit. So I've put the SD card in the goggles. I'm just waiting for it to power up now. And as you can see, the image is coming on the screen. I've just got my GoPro recording through the lens so you guys can actually see. As soon as it's powered up properly, we'll enter the menu and we'll actually check that the 1200 milliwatt mode is actually showing. So we can see that is fired up. So we're gonna go down into settings. We're gonna go up from the bottom. So as you can see from the device info screen, we have the 1200 milliwatt mode available. If I actually go into the settings, you can see we can scroll down to 1000, 700, 500, 225. So you can now see that the hacks are available and ready to go. Now, one last thing I just want to talk about in this video is the DJI FPV remote controller with regards to these hacks. Now, there is nothing needed to be done on the FPV remote at all. If you do the hacks on the system, the FPV remote will follow as soon as it connects. The only thing you do need to be making sure is that they are all on the same firmware, so make sure that everything is updated correctly. However, there is no specific hack for the remote controller. The way the system works is when these enter it, that message is sent to all parts of the system when you connect it and it will enter the FCC mode if the ear unit is in or it will go to CE mode if the ear unit is in it as well. So from the remote point of view, simply do the hacks and the remote will follow automatically when you connect the system up. Now, another thing I just want to quickly tag on the end of this video is regarding the 50 megabits a second mode, because there is some confusion around this, and I'll probably make a separate video on this later. But just be aware, the new 50 megabits mode that DJI added only works when you're in a non-public channel, that is channel 1 to 7, or 
one to three depending on if you're in FCC or CE mode. It does not work in channel eight. So when you are flying this system, I would always suggest making sure you're not in channel eight. It will boot to channel eight for the first time and it always jumps to channel eight when you first turn it on. However, I would always fly in one of the other channels and not channel eight itself, simply because the system doesn't behave at its full potential in those modes and certain features are not available. Now that is it for this video. If you found it useful, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. I've, I hope you have found it interesting and having all of the hacks under one place hopefully will make life a little bit easier for everyone. As I've said, currently it works with all of the firmware on the ear units as well as the FPV goggles version 1 and version 2. There is no information yet if these hacks will work on the future FPV drone that is rumoured. However, I suspect they won't. And as I have already said at the start of this video, I would strongly suggest not updating your firmware on this system and until we know what the future holds as DJI release new firmware for the version 2 goggles specifically because they are going to be releasing a number of ones and we don't know what effect that will have on the current FPV system. Anyway, if you'd like to support us, there are links to this system in the description of this video. They are affiliate links, but it is only by you guys using them I'm able to keep making videos like this. Please, again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell as well. And I'll update you on any changes on this or anything around the new FPV drone as soon as it becomes available.